Welcome to the LBC podcast, where we explore Christian theology and practice for the building up of God's family. My name is Joel Lapierre, and I'm the high school director at LBC. And I'm Chris Moore, the children's ministry director at LBC. And uh, with us today, we have Samer and Liz Kassar. Thank you guys for coming on. Can you guys say hi? Hey, guys. Hi. Hey, LBC family. There you go. Um, so Samer and Liz have been faithful members of LBC since 2007, and uh, they've been serving in various ministries over the years with us. And I think, Samer, you were on staff with us for a time. Can you kind of uh, share that a little bit? Yeah. Um, during uh, 2008, 2009, I had um, uh, a job loss uh, due to the economy kind of crashing during that time. And um, I had struggled so many times to try and find a job out there. and um, LBC, it was a unique opportunity where Pastor Andy had gone off to Oregon and the men's uh, ministry uh, spot was open that he was kind of covering. And so me, as well as Fred Ramirez, kind of co-teamed that as a, on a part-time basis to keep the men's ministry and life groups going on at LBC. And uh, it was really um, an, an enlightening and joyful opportunity that I had to be able to work at LBC. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So funny story about Samer. Actually, there's probably a lot of funny stories if we all, (laughs) most of us probably know him. Um, So first year on staff, it's 2018 VBS. We're doing a, it's a game on theme. Samer's serving as an MC. And uh, so if you know Samer, he does everything like full bore, all out, crazy so he rolls in full hockey gear. I think you've got the pads. You've got everything on. Helmet. And he rolls in. I, think, I don't know if you had rollerblades or if you had roller skates. But either way, it was, it was funny. So he comes down the aisle. And then he's trying to get the kids all riled up. And he starts jumping. So keep in mind, he's on roller skates, on a slanted aisle. And he's jumping. And every time he jumps, he's like getting more off and more off. And so I'm standing in the back. I think I'm standing next to Liz. And Liz is like, oh, he's going to break something. Like, Chris, what do you let him doing? Um, and I think, yeah, I think you end up falling. And then you get right back up and you start doing it again. But, yeah, the mm-hmm. point of that was that all of us are like, okay, what's, what's Sam are going to do? This is going to be funny. <laughs> he's probably going to break something. Is yeah. the church going to be liable? Yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen here? This is my first VBS. Am I going to get fired? No. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's the crazy, but it's uh, also what you get with Samer is a huge heart and uh, loves kids, loves his family, is always joyful. Um, so that's, that's why we want you guys here because we love you guys. And so we Thank had to you. share something funny about Samer. <laughs> Thanks for having us here. Yeah. Now I know Samer to be uh, a little prone to injury. Did, he, did you get injured at all during uh, that VBS? Um, escapade? Well, there was the injury of 2009 uh, where, you know, I, I was rolling down in a, in a golf court, I think, golf golf cart down the uh, aisles of church. I think there was VBS of 2012 uh, where I dumped over a bucket of pennies one time or the coins that we had collected. The, I mean, I, God has really saved me through a lot of potential injuries. So, Yeah. <laughs> God is merciful, huh? Very merciful. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, uh, Sam and Liz, we want to talk about today finding joy during a COVID-19 Easter. Um, We know that the the reason for our joy during this time is Christ's death and resurrection. And and, and that's an important thing that we want to focus on. We want to focus on specifically um, how we can maintain joy in this weird season when we are kind of living um i mean we're not going to be able to celebrate easter the way we usually do um in fact i I wonder if ever in my lifetime there ever be a moment like this really um and so it's 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 weird it's different and so we want to talk about how can we kind of have joy during this time and celebrate easter um with joy and so we invited you both on because one we think that you you guys are great examples of um, just of displaying joy in your in your home, and we just want to get a glimpse into um, into how you guys do that, how you guys have joy in your home, and how are you guys doing that now during um, this kind of quarantine. And so, uh, but before we get into that, before we can ask you guys a few questions, Chris and I want to walk through 
joy and what joy is and what joy isn't from a scriptural uh, uh, perspective. And so first of all, um, the first thing I want to talk about and what joy is, is first of all, joy is a fruit of the spirit. And we see that in Galatians 5.22 when it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and, and so on. And we see, so it's important to understand that um, this kind of joy, this Christian joy is produced by the Holy Spirit. As we walk with him by the spirit, we um, have this benefit of joy. We experience this joy. I love the way um, John MacArthur says it in his study Bible. He says, it is the sense of well-being experienced by one who knows all is well between himself and the Lord. Um, so joy is experienced when we are in relationship with God. And that's, that's a huge thing to understand that this Christian joy is experienced when we have a relationship with the Lord. And so as you walk by the spirit, choosing to follow and to fix your eyes on Christ, you'll experience the joy of knowing your salvation in him, that relationship that we have with him. Um, Chris, you had something on what it isn't. Yeah. So to go with that joy is not, or you cannot have uh, the fullness of joy without the spirit. So if we go to Psalm 1611, it says, you make known to me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 84, one, two, um, and 10 says, how lovely is your dwelling place. O Lord of hosts, my soul longs. Yes. Faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. And yeah, so without the spirit, we can't experience that fullness that's being described in the Psalms. Mm, It's good. And then we also see that joy is always available for Christians. It's always there. It's always accessible. Um, and, we, and we understand that this is true because we know that we have a living hope that's guaranteed through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, we see that in when um, the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 1, um, he says in verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then he kind of walks further on, further on and talks about how these these exiles are experiencing trials, yet they have joy and they're rejoicing with an inexpressible joy filled with glory. Um, and so even, uh, so it's always available and that's true. Even when we have, um, different circumstances that are not favorable, we can't, we can't ever experience hardship and suffering and then have joy be absent of that. So in fact, we're to consider it all joy, as it says in James chapter one, when we experience all trials and hardships, because we know that God's building our character, he's building steadfastness in us. Um, we know that God is with us. He will never stop loving us. We can read all about that in Romans eight. Um, he has a purpose in the midst of the hardships. We also read that in Romans eight. He gives us a hope and a future. And even Paul in second Corinthians six ten, he says, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. So in sorrow, there is still joy. Yeah. And then we see that joy is, it's, it's a commandment. It's to, it's commanded. Uh, it means that we're uh, being joyful is not an option for Christians. Um, a couple of verses that um, really displays that uh, Psalm 102 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Um, Philippians two eighteen, Paul says, be glad and rejoice with me. Um, so joy is commanded because it is the only fitting response um, to receiving the goodness of God. Um, because we have Christ, we are commanded to have the joy that comes with Christ. Um, and so it's something that we're supposed to seek after. Um, and I, there's another great verse that goes along with it that kind of explains it. Deuteronomy 26, 11, and you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you. So we're supposed to rejoice in the things that God has given us. And so, you know, whether that's our family or, or the circumstances that are before us, we're so supposed to thank God for those things because he is author of all good things. And so that's what we can see that joy is commanded. 
right? And so real joy will always include worship. So it's never absent of worship. And we see a couple examples of that. So in Acts 2, um, we see the disciples are gathered there in the early church um, after Jesus had ascended and they were, they couldn't help but to praise God for what they'd experienced, what they had seen. That was just a natural outflow of the joy that they had. And you see that same thing happening in Luke chapter 24, where they're just overwhelmed with the joy and the fullness of God. And the response is worship. You never have this fullness of joy without worshiping the God who gives us the joy. That's great. Um, just to kind of summarize, as we talk about all these, these things about joy, uh, I, I like this really good working definition that John Piper gives. He says this, that Christian joy is a good feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the word and in the world. Um, and so Sam and Liz, as we talk about this and kind of define this, um, you know, we see that we're supposed to see the beauty of Christ in the word and in the world. And I'm sure in your guys' um, you know, in your life and in your family, um, this is kind of a pursuit that you guys have is seeing how God is blessing you and seeing the goodness of God um, through the word and through what you see in the world and what he's given you. And, um, and so kind of, you know, we want to hear from you guys a little bit about um, the joy that you guys have in your family. So the first question for you is, uh, how are you finding joy during this time? I think God uniquely prepared Elizabeth and I for this situation and the fact that um, we try and live our lives with just a lot of joy and from that joy, a lot of gratitude. And what we, what we try and do here is make it fun for them and make it interesting and make it lively. And more than that, try and utilize this unique opportunity that we have at this moment in time because we talk about it often in our family that we will probably never have an opportunity like this again to spend this much time with our family stripped away of everything that they are used to having pretty much. And we're using this time to just have fun. I mean, last night we, we brought the cornhole boards inside the house, which is something that I would never <laughs> she would <do>. never allow. <laughs> And we did that and we had a blast. I mean, having dance parties, doing a lot of puzzles, just trying to find joy in being together and pointing our kids to the fact that this opportunity, we will never get back. You hear so many times of families say, I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I don't have the ability to do that. And at this moment of time, we have the time to say yes to our children. We have the time to say yes to you know, being together and yes to, we want to have fun while we're doing this to the best of our abilities. So we're trying to find joy in just all the little things. I don't know if you want to yeah. I think that um, that first week was hard for our kids because they're, um, if you know us, their life is very busy. Um, and so that routine seems so disruptive to them. That was heartbreaking for them. Um, but we've talked a lot about that God is in control. He knows he knew this was going to happen and he knows when this is going to end. And so, um, are we going to trust him? Are we going to put our trust in him? And what are we going to do with our time? Because this is our situation and we can have a great time and enjoy one another, or we can, you know, be depressed and sad. And I think that there's moments, obviously it's not perfect, but I feel like our kids are understanding that this is this is what God's plan is for us right now. And we are enjoying just our family time together because it's not something that we always get a ton of. Yeah, that's a really good point. Making the best of the time that you have with your families um, and that, you know, you're so right. Like we have these busy lives and that's the thing I've been reflecting on too, is just how, how busy I've been and how much, you know, how many opportunities I've had. Um, to to love my family but i've kind of you know given the excuse i'm too busy for that and kind of got stripped that away you know we, we don't have an excuse and so we need to make the best time so i love that and that's kind of like what we talked about that you need to choose to have joy during this time you know you can you can sit around and kind of let it let it all fall on you or you can decide to pursue the lord and pursue the things that the lord has blessed you with and so i, I love that a lot thanks for sharing that yeah. yeah, that's good. Thanks. Thanks for giving us a window into your home. So go a little bit deeper now into what's going on at home. So through your parenting, 
um, your interactions with your kiddos as you're having fun. How does kind of the joy, how do you, what does that joy look like through the parenting beyond the activities um, in your home? I, I will say, um, I would say the hardest struggle of this whole COVID-19 process is, and I'm to blame for it because I'm a people person. I love being around people. I get my energy from being around people. And the sports are one thing for my children, but also being around the people that are in their sports is, is so joyful to them. And I think having that taken away, and it's just, <laughs> just us, just us. <laughs> um, I think our, our, uh, our, our parenting has, has had to be more involved and more in depth and allowing every opportunity, whether that be good or bad in our home, to continue to point them back to Jesus. And like my wife said, it's not perfect. Um, it, it, it's not. And so our parenting, um, what we've been trying to do is utilize every opportunity in the good moments, in, in the bad moments, in the hard moments, um, in all of it, to really just seek as a learning opportunity for our kids. Like, what are they going to learn from this? Because we've told them several times, this will probably be in your children's history books at some point in time, what you are going through now. And what are you going to tell your children about this time that you had? Because it, it probably won't happen again in our lifetime. Oh, I hope not. But, you know, it, it's just, it, it, it's unique and it's, it, it's, it's, it's challenging. But um, I, I would say that in our parenting as well, we've had to rely more and more on each other. Because um, I'll tell you what, I would not want to be in quarantine with any other partner except this girl right, sitting right next to me. Because honestly, she's made it fun. <laughs> She's, you know, we've bent the rules in so many different places with our children that we normally abide by. And, and we're trying our best to, to really just inject that joy into our children during this time when they've been stripped of all that they're used to. I think, too, one of the things that um, our parenting, I feel like we're getting better at and partly is just being um, ch doing church at home. Um, you know on a Sunday when we go to church, it's frantic. We're trying to get there on time. We're leaving because then we got to go do something afterwards. And we've really had, a, the sermons have been so good for our kids and um, they're long for them, but they've been so good because they're so applicable and we can use them all week long and point them back to the scripture we read, what the lesson was and um, giving our kids some tools. What does this look like in real life? Um, and we've had some great discussions after our church, like at home, just in our pajamas, just talking about what we've learned. And, um, that's not something that we've been real good at, um, when life is normal and our schedule is crazy. Uh, we maybe get a few words on our drive home from church, but this has given us an opportunity, um, to dive a little bit deeper into what we've learned each week. So I think there's been some great positives. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, there's one thing you stuck out, Sam, that you said about um, taking each of the situations and the circumstances and kind of using them as learning opportunities. And that really reminded me of Deuteronomy 6 when um, the commandment is to teach and he starts listing out in all the different situations. And that's, that's really how we disciple and we train up our children is using up all those little situations and being able to point them to Christ and yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And um, yeah, you guys are doing a great job. <laughs> there are times, honestly, Chris, and you, know, you might not want to be here, <laughs> but um, we're, trying, we're trying to laugh at a lot of stuff that we normally wouldn't laugh at. And honestly, truly, like th this moment in time, uh, I... I I know that there's a lot of suffering and I know that there's a lot of things happening in our external world. Um, and we're going to enter into a new reality. I think when all this is over. Um, and so, you know, what we're trying to do inside our home at this point in time is really just try and inject that, that fruit of the spirit, that, that joy. And, and if, if the fruit of the spirit is, is one of, if one of the fruits of the spirit is joy, I mean, we're trying to just shake our tree as much as we possibly can until there's no, like, you know, 
no more fruit on that thing. And so we, it, it, there are, like we said earlier, there are good days and there are bad days, but we are just trying to make the best of every situation. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Um, so could you guys give us a time or two when God helped you learn joy in a tough situation? What did you learn about God and how did it affect your faith? Uh, oh. oh, I'll, I'll start. Um, it's, it's a lot of Sammer story, but I'll, I'll, I'll set it up for you. Um, when Carter was two months old, he's 11 now. So when he was two months old, we were given a notice that in 30 days, Sammer's company was going to have a bunch of layoffs. They were going to lay off a third of their workforce. Um, and I'll be honest, I think Sam and I like looked at his territory, how he was performing and we we're like, it's not going to be him. It's not going to be him. He's a great employee. He's a great salesman. Um, we're going to be fine. Um, and then I'll never forget. I got up at 3 a.m. to feed Carter. He was three months old then and Car Sam checked his email and there it was. It was that notice that he was going to be laid off. Um, and it was at a time when the economy was horrible. It was 2009. Um, and so he got right to work applying for new jobs. And, um, it was, we, we just, we were relying on Sam's ability. We trusted Sam or he had provided for our family and we knew he could do it. We weren't relying on God. Of course we would pray, but we were, we really trusted, I really trusted in Sam's ability to find a new job. And he, pro I can't even tell you how many job interviews he went on and every company, there was number one and number two. And Sam always was that second guy. Well, we went with the other guy because, or we went with the other person because, and um, it really started to rattle us. Yeah, um, and I'll tell you what, from that moment I got that notice, I mean, it was a full-time job for me. I took it upon myself, my shoulders, my own abilities. Eight hours a day, I would be in this office, on LinkedIn, on every kind of website possible to try and find a job. And I, I, I was relentless. And I, I got to a point where um, my, my kids started to feel a difference with me. My wife started to see that the joy was kind of getting sucked out of me because after denial, after denial, after denial and rejection, after rejection, um, it, it, I started to doubt my own ability. I started to say, am I good enough? Um, can I do this? Um, can I support my family? I've got four bodies, you know, that were counting on me to get it done. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, like it wasn't until members of the church started saying, hey, you, you've really got to let go. You've got to give up the control to God. You've got all of this on your shoulders. You've got all of this weight that you're carrying. And you've got to let God work. And you've got to see him move. And you've got to look for those windows that he's trying to open up for you um, here and there. And I'll tell you, between my family being a huge source of encouragement and my church family at LBC, which I can't tell you more the number of times in my own life and then in the lives of those in our church family that this church has showed up in more ways than one. And I remember that when I was searching for a job and people knew it at our church because they were praying for us, that one anonymous person slipped a 20 in my pocket walking you know, in the courtyard at church. It just, just little acts like that this church is an amazing family to be a part of. And it really got me through a tough time. And um, honestly, it was the first time in my life that I had felt joy seep from my body, which is an unusual and very uncomfortable thing for if you know who I am. And so um, I saw God move. Once I finally let go and I gave him control and I gave him the reins, um, there were doors that started opening up and they weren't necessarily – I would say the, the doors that I had intended to open up, but they were doors that led me to where I'm at today. Um, and the relationships that I, 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 I grew from that, from those w windows opening, those doors opening into where I am today, I can honestly look back and say that I am grateful to have had lost my job. 
I am grateful to have gone through that process. I would never wish it on any, any, anyone, ever, because it's hard. But at the same time, I can understand and I can relate and I can be joyful and know that God has got a plan in the roughest of times, that he's got control of the situation and especially this environment that we're in today. I know he's in control and God is showing up in so many amazing ways online, virtually. Like there are, in our neighborhoods outside, there are people who are in need and it's our job, it's our calling as a Christian to be there, to be there to support them and to help point them back to Jesus. And so that moment in our lives, um, we're, we're grateful for, and, and, and we can express our gratitude to God for what he had taken us through. And uh, our family is better, you know, because we had been able to go through that. Yeah, yeah that's good. And that, that reminds me a lot about um, 1 Peter 1, eight, where um, Peter, after just talking about the, the, the audience that he's addressing, the, the, the exiles who are in the dispersia, um, these these Christians, they are dealing with persecution and just all all, all these different trials that they are experiencing. And, and it says this, and Peter's saying this about their faith in First um, Peter one eight. Um, he says, um, "And you rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory." And that and just kind of what you were expressing there reminds me of that kind of that the joy is just seeping out of you after it, like experience this that like I'm not in control. Um, my job is lost yet. God is on his throne. God is over all this. He's in control. And, and when you're able to, to, to recognize that, that's where that joy comes from because joy is from God. And so thanks for sharing that. That was really cool. Yeah. That's great. And one of the things I wanted to share real quick is one of my favorite ver- verses from second Corinthians 12, nine. Um, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness, and therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me for the sake of Christ. Then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm. So just his grace is, is if it, it's kind of, it, it's just like the joy, like it, it, we can always tap it. It's there and it's there for us to be able to reach and grab for in any of our moments, you know, whether that be good or bad, it's always there and he's ready and waiting to, to accept us. That's good. Thanks, Samer. So last question for you guys. Um, can you be frustrated or sad and still have joy? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we have moments like that every day at our house. Um, <laughs> somebody's mad, somebody's frustrated, somebody's sad, somebody's missing their friends, um, somebody's having a hard time getting their work um, completed. Sam and I are both working from home. Um, our kids are doing their school at home. Um, We are supposed to be in Maui right now for spring break. Um, Yeah, but um, I am so thankful too. Um, There are so many wonderful things that have happened during this time. Um, And I have enjoyed having my kids at home. And not that it's easy because certainly it, it, it isn't. And um, certainly I'd like to have some quiet time, but there is none. Um, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have three children like their dad. Loud. <laughs> um, but um, I still have joy. I wake up and I choose joy. I choose joy. I choose to serve my family. I choose to serve my husband and my kids. Um, I get that. I get refreshed from the Lord. I, I get my strength from him. I know that I can make it through the day using him, relying on him, um, calling on him. I don't, I couldn't get through the day without him. Um, because, because it's hard. It's hard. This isn't an easy time. Um, and certainly not easy circumstances, but, um, yes, you can, you can have joy and be frustrated. It, it's a, I think people um, outside of the church community have uh, this perception that our lives 
are perfect. You know, the Christian life is perfect. It's going to be happy. It's going to be, you know, filled with excitement and all these blessings. And um, it, it's, it, it's a daily process that we have to endure and go through to choose the joy that she's talking about, to choose that. And it, there, are, there are rough days. There are really rough days out there. And this event is not like anything that we've ever experienced before because when people are, are struggling in their family or in the marriage or in their household or what it may be, it's usually, uh, solidif- or it's just usually just okay. contained to that family unit. This is different because it's impacting every single household. And so, I mean, just as an example, uh, my son, uh, we had put him to bed uh, at, you know, at his time. And, and then a little while later, he came into our bedroom just with a sad heart. He, and he just said, I can't go to sleep because all I look around in my room is just hockey stuff on the wall. And it makes me think of hockey and wanting to play and being on the ice. And we just said, hey, crawl up in bed. We got you. You're not the only one dealing with this. Everyone is dealing with this in a different way, buddy. But you got to understand that right now, more than ever, this is our time where we can, we have the time to be together as a family. We have the time to, to encourage one another. We have the time that we can, you know, really be here for one another. And we are here for you during this time in the same way that Jesus is here for you as well, buddy. And you're not alone in this and don't ever feel alone. So... It, it's okay to, to feel the feelings that you're feeling, but what what we try and do in regards to our parenting is, is re-inject that, that fruit of the Spirit, that joy back into it, to lift them up. Because the longer that we stay down, the longer that we're in that mentality and that mood, the worse it is. If you've got, you've got to be able to find joy in serving, joy in loving, joy in reaching out virtually. You've got to find the joys that are available to us now at this moment in time. And there's lots of opportunities to be able to do that. Yeah, I love that, Sam. Or just uh, when they're experiencing those, those feelings of frustration and anger and despair almost sometimes that, hey, guys, let's remember this. Let's remember Jesus and what we have to be thankful for and putting it in perspective. And um, yeah, that's so good. That's so good. See, finding the joy in the midst of those challenging times is really good. Um, So guys, thank you so much for answering a few of our questions. (laughs) We've been uh, been excited to get into a window in your home and and all of us are kind of experiencing maybe this a little bit differently, but we're all in the same boat. Um, So thank you guys. Uh, what we also wanted to do is kind of wrap up as just reminder to our church family, to everybody who's listening, that if you want some additional reading on joy, there's a great book written by John Piper. It's called When I Don't Desire God, How to Fight for Joy. And we intentionally uh, just saturated the podcast with scripture and Bible verses and um, please go back and listen to the podcast and go back to those verses and read them and meditate on them. And this is the time to do that so that we can just saturate our minds with the joy of the Lord so that we can have the right perspective and remember that he's in control because he's got this. Um, So encourage you to do that this week. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Thank you you. guys. And thank you church family and to the leadership of LBC. Thank you for all that you're doing behind the scenes and, and transforming our church virtually on, on, you know, with the flip of a coin. Um, you guys have done an amazing job, and we are so super thankful to be a part of this family, be a part of this church, and we just want to thank the, the, the church leadership and all that you guys are doing during this time. And I know it can't be easy for, for you guys as well, so thank you guys. Appreciate you guys' kind words, um, and thank you guys for coming on and just being uh, just great examples of what it means to have joy in, in, in during the midst of all this and in your home. So we appreciate that. And we thank you listeners. Uh, we, we hope that this has been an encouragement to you, an encouragement to dive into God's word, um, to look at the source of where joy comes from, and to really think about um, who's in control during all this and, and, and where do we find that joy. And so we pray that you find that in the Lord and through his scripture. And so, yeah, we encourage that. 
Uh, you have been listening to the LBC Podcast, a podcast of Lorgan Bible Church in Bakersfield, California. Uh, if you like listening to this podcast, please share it with a friend and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all new podcasts. Thank you for listening and God bless you. We'll see you next time.